In the world of investing, trying to choose whether you invest in just index funds or individual stocks is like the ongoing battle between whether you want mayonnaise or ketchup with your fries. Or from a UK perspective, it's like saying, do you put the milk in before or after you've poured the hot water for your tea? It's obviously after. There are diehard fans on either side of the argument and new investors are stuck in the middle somewhere trying to figure things out, which is why I wanted to make this video to run through everything you need to know about why you want to use one or the other in your own investment portfolio and the key information that you need to know. First, a quick trip through history that lets us understand how we've ended up in this position in the first place. Before the 1970s when index funds were created that the public could buy, you only really had the choice of either pick your own stocks or investing into mutual funds. Mutual funds tried to pick their own collection of stocks and give their investors a good return of their money, and they were pretty popular because, well, why not? How are you supposed to know what to invest in yourself? Hand over your cash and let the professionals do the work, right? A team of well-paid and well-dressed people would find the best companies to invest in, take their cut, and then give you back some great returns. At least that's how it was meant to work out. You see, the issue was that a lot of these mutual funds weren't actually performing very well at all. Investors were seeing that the stock market might have done very well in one year, but their mutual fund didn't perform as well. So for example, the stock market might have jumped 15% up, but when they called their broker to find out how much their mutual fund had gone up, it was only up 10%. Some of that was obvious because of fees and charges. These mutual funds had to pay all of their staff after all and get some healthy bonuses too. You can't expect someone to just have one holiday home in the Hamptons now, can you? And then some of the loss gains were just from bad stock picks. Unfortunately, even the best can't get them all right. So anyway, fast forward to the world of index funds getting created where you were no longer needed an expensive money manager and now you have a passive way to invest in the stock market that just buys all of the stock market and doesn't charge you anywhere near the fees that were taken before. It's passive because all an index fund is meant to do is track the performance of the market, nothing more, nothing less. So popular indexes like the S&P 500 have loads of funds tracking them and it's all done for you in exchange for low fees and no hassle. But is that all we want as investors? There has to be more out there than just market returns, right? What about all of these stocks like Amazon, Tesla, Apple and Monster Energy that have gone up loads more than the stock market? We don't want to miss out, right? Okay, let's run through some of these points one by one and really give this one a fair look. All right, let's bring back our ketchup and our mayo. Full disclosure, I'm definitely a mayo guy when it comes to fries or even dipping my pizza in. Don't judge it until you've tried it. Right, so where were we? Okay. Index funds are great because they're super cheap, especially when compared to what you used to have to pay as an investor to these big old mutual funds. On average, their fees per year could be anywhere from 0.07% to 0.3% at the moment, which for most people is probably a couple of cups of coffee a month, and it's not even like you need the cash. The fees in the funds are just built into the costs of it. On the other hand, owning stocks doesn't cost us anything, but just be careful, I'm not talking about any kind of platform or account fees here, they'll all depend on where you buy them from. For both of these, there might be broker fees and commissions, but again, this is all down to the platform that you choose to use. There's been a retail investor explosion over the last couple of years worldwide with new apps popping up offering free trading or super low cost fees, which have completely changed the game. And on that note, if you do want to open up any kind of investing account and get some free shares or cash, please check the links in the description below where I have all the latest offers on the ones that I prefer to use. So upfront costs are probably about the same these days between the two. So what else do we need to consider? One big thing for me about index funds is that you get diversification built in. And this might seem obvious, but don't forget how important that is. An index fund of 500 companies versus any chosen individual stock will have less risk by default. One company on its own is going to have risk in its sector that could affect its future. For example, if you pick any kind of oil and gas company, it's going to have the risks around the price of oil and gas itself, the cost of finding new supplies, and even threats from the government from windfall taxes. So all this means is that with any individual stock, you have a few more things to consider and worry about, which really comes down to your time and how much you want to spend. In an ideal world when people aren't investing their life savings into meme stocks, you'd like to think that if you're going to choose to invest in individual stocks, you'd at least give it some thought to understand what the business does, how it makes money, whether it's fairly priced and what you should expect the share price to be in the future, at least compared to the index. Otherwise, I think you'd agree that if there's no additional reward, then why take the risk? Speaking of zero risk and guaranteed returns, if you're enjoying the video, please do me a huge favor and hit the like button below, press subscribe and leave a comment below. It really helps get videos like this to more amazing people like you. Now with that done, let's carry on. Keeping on that subject, this area is really important. In theory, buying individual stocks should offer much greater rewards. If you're going to take on more risk, then you're going to spend more time doing the research needed, then you would expect that you should get more rewards than those people who are just buying the index fund. At least that's what you would expect in theory. In reality, it gets a little bit more complicated. You see, here's where we need to talk about actual returns. Index funds have become really popular over the last few decades for good reason, and that's the fact that they've provided excellent returns to shareholders. 
Whatever happens in any given year, you'll get the average return of the market minus fees. The word average sounds rubbish though, let's be honest. None of you watching think you're going to get average returns, you will want more. However, although these returns are the average returns of the market, they're actually showing themselves to have above average returns when compared to actively managed mutual funds and other professionally managed funds. Even when compared to the average investor, the returns of a basic index fund have completely torn apart the average person. If you're a keen viewer of finance YouTube, you'll probably be sick of these statistics, but they're true and well worth repeating. S&P Global, the company that manages various indexes, including the S&P 500, come out every year with what they call their scorecard, and it puts actively managed funds up against the market and lets us know well how those actively managed funds have done versus just investing in an index fund. If you've not seen these reports before, you'd probably think maybe 60 to 80% of the managers must beat the market, right? In any given year and probably better over time. I mean, surely, otherwise, what's the point paying their fees? Well, the reality is slightly different. Even in 2021, which was an incredible year for investing where seemingly everything just went up and up, in 14 out of 17 categories of fund, so things like small caps, large cap, and so on, they failed to beat the market. And that's even gross of fees, so it gets worse when fees are actually taken off. And once you extend your time horizons out further to say 10 years, it really doesn't look pretty good. And if you handed over your money to get invested, those outcomes are not looking good. During that time period, even taking into account all kinds of funds and being generous, let's say we don't include fees, the best possible selection of funds still got outperformed by a simple index fund 79% of the time, as you can see here on the orange bar. The worst offending mutual funds, once fees are taken into account, underperformed 86% of the time. Now, I don't know about you, but if I was in a job and those were my results, I'd definitely get fired. At this point, you might think it's an open and shut case then and we just stick to index funds and never touch an individual stock. Or you might think, what a load of BS. I know more than those people. I've bought Tesla and I've made loads of money and I've made loads more than the S&P 500 has over the last few years. Also, full disclosure, I've got a good slice of my investment in individual stocks too. So are we just being naive and overconfident if we think we can beat the market with some of our own stock picks? Well, I think it depends, and I think we're going to need a little bit of wisdom from those who have walked the walk before. Probably one of the most famous and most quoted people by investors is Warren Buffett. Now, there's a man who definitely loves tomato ketchup with his daily McDonald's breakfast and a can of Coke. There's no doubt that Buffett alongside Charlie Munger have trounced the stock market with their investments in Berkshire Hathaway. One of the things he said was that you should imagine that with your investment picks, you've only got a punch card with 20 holes in it. And every time you made a choice, that's one less you get for the rest of your life. Knowing that, you're probably going to think very long and hard about what you actually invest in. Do all of the research you can and be careful about when you actually make that purchase. He also adds that there won't be many chances to find great companies because there's a lot of crap out there and he's right. In terms of stock market returns, if we look at the data, only a small number of companies out there are actually responsible for the entire return of the stock market. If we have a look here from research done by academics Crittenden and Wilcox, they looked at the returns of all the US stocks and then compared them to the returns of the Russell 3000 index. As you can see, only 36% of stocks actually performed better than the index itself. So that means that two thirds underperformed the market. And then what's more important and pretty incredible, only 6.1% of companies massively outperformed. So unless you were invested in that small number of companies, sorry, you've missed out. What this says to us as investors is that you need to think really carefully about what stocks you're gonna invest in because only a small number of them out there will really be the winners. And often, just because a stock has increased in value a lot in the past, doesn't mean that a stock will keep increasing in value over time. Unfortunately, this is one of the easiest traps to fall into and one that leads a lot of people into buying the latest stock or the hottest stock at the time, when you really should be avoiding it. Even with all of that said though, there are a lot of benefits to buying stocks individually and making your own decisions in your portfolio. Firstly, you can have complete control of exactly where your money's going to work. You can easily argue that there are a lot of rubbish companies in an index fund that you don't want to invest in. Also, you might have a moral duty not to invest in companies depending on the industry they're in. These days, it's really easy to buy and sell shares at little to no cost, and it's also even buy them in fractions, so you don't have to worry about the same issues that investors had to face before. Let's not also forget that you might think that index funds are artificially pumping up the value of large cap stocks that you think are overpriced, so you can go ahead and make your own portfolio exactly how you like. Also, I do think there's a lot to be said for owning individual stocks in terms of a real sense of ownership. Even though an index fund does hold investments, I think when you do buy individual company stock, you get a slightly different feeling and that feels quite intentional. And although it's not something you can measure, we're human after all, and if it helps get you interested in investing, then so be it. The main thing though, is the ability to really match up your own portfolio to meet your own needs and requirements. If you're happy with a large amount of risk and you know what you're getting yourself into, then go ahead and do exactly what you want. As that, after all, is what investing is all about. 
it's finding something that works for you. However, the issue you have is that I don't think a lot of people fully understand what they're getting themselves into and there lies the problem. Too many people got into investing during this amazing bull market run over the last couple of years when everything was just going up and it didn't really matter about what kind of company you bought, it just kind of kept going in one direction. Seemingly, no one cared about profits, there's been loads of hype companies and some parts of the year have felt a lot like a dot-com bubble. Now, I can't pretend that I was there to invest during that period and that's another issue because we've only known a relatively great period of time. Some of us might be overconfident in our own abilities and assume that we know better than the market. Personally, I do think there'll always be plenty of opportunities to beat the market, but I don't go in with high expectations and I like to keep a large portion of my own investments in index funds to weather the storm and to protect myself. I think the real question for investors is what mix works for you. If you want to buy individual stocks, go ahead, but really try and understand what you're getting yourself into. Invest in things you understand. Maybe even think about the industry you've got experience in. Use your edge, as legendary investor Peter Lynch would say. Everything comes down to a trade off how much time you want to invest in trying to find the needles in the haystack versus just buying the whole haystack, as the founder of Vanguard, John Bogle, would say himself. You'll also need to be prepared for much greater volatility in most stocks, and this will definitely test you mentally. And until it happens to you and you see your investments down 50, 60, or even more percentage points, it's actually really difficult to try and prepare for. For every Amazon and Tesla, there are literally hundreds of companies who never made it. But unfortunately, you don't hear much about those companies and we only see the winners. And it's the same for every Warren Buffett. There's a million Mr. Smiths out there who underperform the market and gamble their money on the next highly speculative stock that doesn't make a profit and we never hear about. In conclusion then, be careful out there, understand the risks and remember, I'm not a financial advisor and I'm just sharing my own thoughts and opinions. If you come at investing with some humility, a strong stomach and you're reasonable in your expectations, then anyone can do well. Between mayo and ketchup, the answer is probably special sauce. As always, if you're new to investing and this all sounds a bit too much for you, don't forget to check out my complete investing for beginners guide here, which I'll leave to a link on screen. Anyway, thank you so much for watching and as always, happy investing.